check one two one two. We live, baby. Come, come, come on. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can you can you can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's your boy Big Chew, the voice of the beat. You know what I won't blaze up. Come on, blaze up. It's a beat for me. Wow 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 wow
Hmm. Which one I had it on? I think I had it on this one. Uh, Mike, that one's good. Can you still hear this? Can y'all still hear this right here? Hedge fund guys and second. Still ain't working. But can y'all still hear this? Hear me saying, talking right now? Take your time. I'm I'm sorry, y'all. I should have been better prepared. I literally just hooked this microphone up when I came here. Y'all can hear it? Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right. So it's something with the audio coming off on my end. Let me take care of this. Let me see. Mm-mm. Girl, it's raining outside. It's so ugly. It's so ugly. It's so ugly outside, but I need to see it. You know, I love a good view. Hold on, y'all. We got a good show today. While I'm figuring this out, let's get into some of the things we're going to talk about. So doing my morning jokes this morning, it made me think about um, what the topic should be about. And I was already going to make the topic about, um, let me see. Maybe this will work. Hold on. I was already going to make the topic about Fannie Mae. So Thank you. Yeah, I was already going to take Fannie Mae. God, leave. I'm so sorry, Mother Queen. I was already going to make the topic about Fannie Lou Hamer. What am I talking about Fannie Mae? Girl, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm head all over the place. So I figured since the morning, Joe's, we were speaking about something and I realized I say people, black people are literally still going um, around with the narrative that black people died to vote. And that's not, that didn't go like that. Black people didn't die to vote. Black people died to become first class citizen through the vote. Now, this is why this is, um, this is important because I have Miss Fannie Lou Hamer, the mother queen, rest in peace literally on here talking about what happened and why they were fighting for their rights. See, this is what I want us to do. I want us to stop going off the old cliche part of shit that we've heard through for many, many years and start thinking for ourselves, start looking at things for ourselves. Okay. So let me do this. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, it ain't dark. This is dark on my phone. It might be my light. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to This is dark on my phone. I don't know why. It's ugly. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Fannie Lou Hamer herself saying why and what they were doing, what they were doing and why they were doing it. It's literally the first few seconds of her speech. Let's get into what Fannie Lou, Miss uh, Mother Queen Fannie Lou had to say. Check it out. And we're going to play this speech again, but I just want to get this part out the way because this is, in my opi opinion, uber important. Check this out. On Valley people and so on, and others who back the Democratic Party, sections of capital, on, with an alliance with union leaders and sections, five, especially the yeah. urban working class and others in the society. Calling a succession of witnesses, among whom are Aaron Henry. Here she go. We're going to play the whole speech, but I want you to hear this part. This is very important. I want me to stand. Mr. Chairman and to the Credentials Committee, my name is Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer, and I live at 626 East Lafayette Street, Roosevelt, Mississippi. Sunflower County, the home of Senator James O. Eastland and Senator Stennis. It was the 31st of August in 1962 that 18 of us traveled 26 miles to the county courthouse in Indianola to try to register to become first class citizens. Did you hear it? Did you hear what she said? I'm going to go back just a bit so that we can hear this because see, I already knew this because I kind of like researched it a bit, but I hear the, because I used to say the same thing. Oh, our ancestors died for us to vote. Ish. And the reason I'm saying ish is because they thought the right to vote would get them first class citizenship. If they thought they could get first class citizenship, 
citizenship, I'm sorry, with the right to boycott the bus, they would have did that. It was never about the vote. It was always about first class citizenship. And they, they believe, shout out to our ancestors, they did what they thought they were doing was right. They believe that the only way to get first class citizenship is to get this through the vote. I need to make that very clear. I'm going to let her say it one more time and then we're going to get on with the show. They always trick us, Mita. Mita, look, to this day, do you hear me? To this day, right now, we're being tricked. Right now. 2024, March 22nd, 5.13 p.m. We're being tricked right now in 2020. Let me let us say it one more time. Because I need to, and we're going to play the whole speech, not the whole speech, but enough of the speech to get my point across. But I need you guys to hear this, right? Our ancestors thought that if we did this, if we got the right to vote, it would make us first class citizens. That's the reason they fought so hard and died to vote. Mind you, it wasn't a whole mass of people that died to vote. It was a handful, some clear, but ultimately a handful. It ain't like a whole bunch of us died like we was, should have been dying allegedly to get off the alleged plantation. So let me let us say it one more time and we're going to get in. I'm going to do the overview of the show and we're going to get right into it. Listen to, listen to our ancestor. This is our, all of our ancestor. Do you hear me? This ain't just mine. This is all of our ancestor. Listen to our queen ancestor. And I live at 626 East Lafayette Street, Roosevelt, Mississippi. Sunflower County, the home of Senator James O. Eastman and Senator Stinney. It was the 31st of August in 1962 that 18 of us traveled 26 miles to the county courthouse in Indianola to try to register to become first class citizens. We was met in Now, we've heard our Queen Mother say it again. Again, this ain't just my ancestor. This all our ancestor. This our spiritual ancestor. Okay? So we heard Queen Mother say why they was going down there to Indianola. It wasn't to vote. They didn't listen. All the people on the ballot was clear. They know them people didn't give a damn about them. And we're gonna get into this after uh in a while because we're gonna go back and check in on Miss Fanny Lou Hamer once the voters' right thing was signed and see what Miss Miss Hamer was saying. Mrs. Hamer, I'm sorry. And Mrs. Hamer was saying the same thing I'm saying right now. We got the right to vote, but we still fucked up. She's gonna, we're gonna get into it. We also gonna get into Kwame Toure, aka Stokely Carmichael. Cause I don't know if you notice on your screen, on the on the thumbnail, that's him behind Miss Fannie Lou Hamer. This is the Trinidadian uh, native who moved to America in, I want to say, eight, nine years old and ended up living in an all Italian clear community. And somehow, some way, by mac immaculate conception and miraculous freaking de deities, he found himself down in the South helping the people down in the South. That nigga, in my opinion, was a freaking spy. He was an agent. He was a plant. But we gonna get into it. Because that's gonna lead into next week's shit. So, before we get started, if you have not already, please like the video. You guys, I appreciate all your support. Shout out to everybody who pulled up to Rumble yesterday. I had such a good time. It was such amazing. Um, it was, it was, it was amazing. I love my Rumble spot. I love um us being able to get together and really just let our hair down, literally, because Rumble let you do. Y'all heard it. We be jamming, listening to music. We did our shy lights deep dive next week. We are whenever y'all ready. I don't want to overload y'all. But whenever y'all ready, we will be diving right into Joe Jackson and the Jackson 5, okay? This is going to be lit for me. I love it. I, I'm just here for it. I, I truly enjoy Educational Friday, the morning jokes, and my deep dives. That's my top three. No shade to the dollhouse, but I literally be anxious, ready to get on these lives. Like, I really like, you know... So shout out to everybody who pulled up. Shout out to everybody who's still pulling up. I'm still getting notifications as we speak. But again, what I need you guys to do is like the video so the people know we're around here joking on some real stuff, okay? Um, uh, uh, what else do I want to say? 
Uh, again, shout out to everybody who shows up to the morning. Jose is typically this crowd and, you know, some more, obviously. But you guys are my free thinkers, and I appreciate y'all for doing that, for being that. I'm sorry. And listen, don't you don't never have to agree with me. You, ne you can disagree with me. It's fine. Just don't insult me. I don't have no issue with none of that, okay? You can't find the shy lights. Go on my community tab. Go on my community tab, and there's a link. Go hit the community tab. There's a link for you, baby. But it might it's under Voodoo Doll TV and not the uh the uh the dollhouse. It's weird. I'm sorry, y'all. But anyways, let's get into it. So this is what we're talking about today. Today, what we're talking about is we have Mrs. Fanny Lou Hamer, one of the grassroots organizers of the voters' registration for black people in um Mississippi. In the South, and in Mississippi in particular, Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer was a black woman who had been a sharecropper all of her life. She was born into the fields. She literally was born, and her mama had her out there picking cotton in the fields. Oh, just sharecropping. I don't know if it was cotton, right? So she had been doing that all her life, and just like that, she also had uh, lived on the plantation of the owner of the land. Mind you, they were grabbing land left and right through taxes. Listen how they were taking our land. Once they came up with the uh with the homestead and, and the tax thing, black people who had no idea about that, they would come and be like, Oh, yeah, you know, um, you behind on taxes. And Negroes is like, What you mean behind on taxes? Yeah, you need to come up with at the time five thousand dollars, which is like equivalent to 50 now. You need to come up with that by Friday, or you, you getting up out of here. And then black people, oh, my God, I can't believe this. I have to come up with that money. And then they will say, well, okay, this is what we'll do. Now, the government going to take it. But what we'll do is we'll let you work your lands because you're the only one who knew how to work it. It's your shit. We'll let you work your lands and we'll provide you with room and board and very minimal to eat for you and your family. But the payback is you have to work your lands and we pay you literal pennies on the dollar. That's literally how that went. Okay. So keep that in mind. So Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer grew up on a, on a, uh, on a, um, in the uh, fields or whatever. She was married. Uh, she had children. Her children also share crop, which is still a, a, a thing today. And uh, she thought, like many others, that it would be the best interest for black people to become first class citizens if they got the right to vote. I don't know who dropped that quarter in Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer's ear. I don't know how this happened. All I know is that this woman, my ancestor, your ancestor too, thought that, hey, I'm thinking for my children, my children's children, my children's children's children, and the best thing for us is to get the right to vote so that we can now become first-class citizens. But we were lied to and we were tricked. Yes, Sophie, this is a great, great... um. This is a great, um, what do you call it, uh, example. The same way how they're taking people's homes now, not being able to afford taxes, nothing new under the sun. I'm glad you brought that up. Let me go get this for y'all, just so you can see it in real time, because I'm a person, I'm a visual, more of a literary thinker. I, ha I have to see certain things, right? So let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something really quickly. Now, mind you, we on here talking about how they took lands back in the day, right? Not only did they take lands back in the day, we also looking at how they taking them now. Like the fuck? Like they've been taking lands. Did I, I, I hope I didn't share that to my story. Hold on. I want to show y'all something. There's a there, there's literally, I'm gonna go to TikTok. There's literally um people land being taken in 2024. Literally. Like this is happening now. Let me go get it. Hold on. I want to show you something. I don't need no notifications. Get off of here. Let me show y'all something. Let me see if this is it. No. Uh, one second. That was this older guy, and this is the video I'm looking for. This was an old man. And, uh, oh, this is a better one, too. I'll share this one. Keep this, you guys. Here's a young lady speaking about how her land or her family's land was taken between 1900 and 2000. Peep this. Let me make it so y'all can see it. 
because this is extremely uber important, okay? All right, let's go get it. Right, yes, I was surprised to learn that in the beginning of the 20th century, Black people owned about 16 million acres of land. And in the beginning of the 21st century, 90% of that land had been stolen or taken or they no longer owned it. That was surprising to me. Um, oh, this... Can you say that? Say it again. You said 16 I mean, million acres. I mean, in the beginning of the 20th century, Black people owned 16 million acres 16 million acres of land and by the 21st century the beginning of the 21st century 90 percent of it was gone it's taken from out of black black hands so was, was eminent domain like the main policies one? like eminent domain policies like you know this whole urban urban renewal bullcrap that mm -hmm. right um people just i outright wanting it like we have a lot of families who have had land stolen from oil companies and um, the governments allowed for them to take it, you know? And there, in some cases, it was illegal. It was illegal. I mean, as horrible as eminent domain is, that was a legal practice. But we are hearing about cases where land was illegally taken from Black people, and when those Black people took deeds and evidence to the courts to get help, they got none. And this is still happening today. This is still happening today. Peep this one. Peep this one. Hold on. Peep this. This is literally still happening today. Look at this. I'm just trying to show y'all, like I tell you, nothing is new under the sun. This is what happens. All the, what, What's happening now, how, how I say, oh, 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 not Erica. Lauren Hill said everything you did has already been done. Look. My name is John Simmons. I moved here 22 years ago. None of this over here was here. This was an isolated place. Nothing was here. And uh, I worked hard. I took a wheelbarrow. It took me a year to clean this land up. And the city would not let me put a brick home here. They said I could only put a double wide. First, they told me I couldn't put nothing here because I told the old trailer home down that my father-in-law had. And I had a lawyer. He charged me $10,000 to get me to get on this land. And his name was, I'm trying to think of his name now. I can't okay, call but now what's but, happening? But right now, the developer in this area, Trent Thomas, Round Tree Development and their lawyers is trying to take my land. Mm -hmm. They asked me to sell. Mm -hmm. I said I wasn't going to sell. They offered me $150,000 for my land just a few years ago. And you see what I got. Mm -hmm. Last month, three months ago, they offered me 500000 in front of my lawyer. I said, no, I'm not going to sell. He called me, Trent Thomas, and say, his father called and say, I own your land up from back yonder. It goes way back there. To your back door and then his son called me two weeks ago and say i want to buy your eastman i said no i'm not gonna sell it he said i can force you to do it when he said that i prayed and i come up with my son and i he called me a few days ago he said you scandalized my name i said no i'm not scandalizing your name I said, you scandalized mine and you say i was the nigger in the way he said, uh, I didn't say that to your face, I said, but you saved it. He said, well, why don't you buy the land back? I said, I, I'm not going to buy it back. I, you ain't got no being, being in my land. And so I hired a lawyer at first, Lipsy, at the uh, Universal Tower Company in Bryan, Texas. Uh, he, uh, college State, which one? Pay attention to what he's saying. He come to find out he was the same one that helped them get into my land. Yep. So I went back to him, told him, no, you can't be my lawyer. And he told me, I said, what do I owe you? He said, nothing. So I hired another attorney to help me out. And God bless, they're still in my land. Still in my land. They're still in my land. I, I don't know how they got into it. I was gonna give my nephew 
a part to build a house and somebody said, you better do a towers check. I said, I went to the record department. I own my land. And when I found out Trent Thomas was in my land, nobody told me how he got in it or nothing, but he's in my land and he's trying to force me out. And they told me if I didn't sell, they're going to buy this on the other side. They're going to squeeze me in. And I was going to lose value. And so all, I'm 81 years old. 81. And I, this is all I have. And I prayed and asked God to bless me with this land. Now the enemy is trying to take it away. And they call me nigger in the way right here. And I told them I'm a black man. Well, you know what? It was a white lady who called to tell me. And I was just beside myself. And I just wanted to see. And so you live in a beautiful community who's going to help you. And may not I don't care about that. Listen to what he just said. They can't, This is his shit. They told him he this is his land that he inherited from his father-in-law, right? He want to put a brick house on there. The people said, oh, no, you can't do that because you tore down an old trailer park. What? Where is that in the law? So then they came and tried to take his land and told him the only way you can get it is if you buy it back. How the fuck am I going to buy my shit back? It's mine. The fuck? You going to tell me what I can and can't do on my shit, then take it from me and tell me I have to buy it back? Remember these words. Everything you did has already been done. There's nothing new under the sun. Remember those words. I'm going to say it one more time. Everything you did has already been done. There is nothing new under the sun. Watch this lady in 1963 give you her story about what happened to her in her land. And it's going to sound fucking identical. Peep this sent me to the hospital. They put my lane in the sewer bank. They got $1,095. They rented the other lane for $375. They put my children on welfare. When I came out of the hospital, they had taken my fence down and widened the road down through my place. They had went around and got all of my credit, those different people that I owed to trust me, and they hadn't paid anybody. I got a lawyer to straighten my business out, and he told me that he would. Sound familiar? Well, he didn't do anything about it. He worried me about selling some of the land. I told him that I didn't want to sell the land. Sound familiar? I wanted to furnish so that I could farm and make a living for my children. And so they just put pressure on me. They cut the welfare check to $20 a month, then they cut it to $17 a month. They worried me so that I had a nervous breakdown in 60. I had to go back to the hospital. So when I came back, I came back home, I still tried to get a punish. He collected all the money, rent on the place. He didn't pay the federal land bank, the notes that I owed. They put pressure on me trying to get me to sell the land I refused. So last year, I rented a portion of the lane for $200 cash. He got that $200. He didn't give us any of it. I went down to Illinois to read it. Did that sound familiar? Liter Listen to me, you guys. Literally, the exact same thing that this older gentleman just spoke about, this lady said the same fucking thing. The only difference was she got sick. And then they put all her children and everybody on welfare. That puts you in the system. Right now she's in the system. The children on welfare, they say, well, you need to sell this land. I ain't, I'm not selling my land. I want my land. Well, I mean, you can't afford to pay X, Y, and Z. Why I got to pay X, Y, and Z? Then listen, listen, pay attention. Then they tell her, first of all, let me back up. They put a whole fucking road in, in down her land. A whole road. They didn't ask her nothing. They waited till she went to the hospital, put a whole road through her fucking land. Then turned around and said, you need to sell it. Well, I don't want to sell it. Well, you need to sell it. I don't want to sell it. Then try to make her buy back her own fucking land. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Black people, shout out to all our ancestors. We're not doing nothing we hadn't already been doing. Everything you did has already been done. 
There's nothing new under the sun. I keep telling you this. This shit recycles. Like, you know how fashion repeats itself? The circle of life, it's a circle for a reason. It go around and then come back. And then it go around and it go. You know how they say karma? It go, it goes around and comes. What goes around comes. It's all a fucking circle. Now, our ancestors thought that getting the right to vote, such as Miss Fannie Lou Hamer, Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer, I'm sorry. She thought that got, getting the right to vote would be the tell-all be-all. It would be, um, it would make us first-class citizens. So stuff like this wouldn't happen. And turned out the lie detector test determined that was a lie. The lie detector test determined, and it's no fault of them because they thought they were doing what was right. But the lie detector test determined that was a lie. They, they, they encouraged us, and this is my great grandmother's era. They encouraged us as black folk to leave our land and go move into these cities. And we lost a whole shit ton of land when we did that. When we left the, the country sharecropping, a lot of times for our own land, when we left the country share crop, cropping, I'm sorry, we, wa we, we walked away from land and they took it from us. People in 2024 are still going to the courthouse getting their land back because they're going to realize that the shit was taken illegally. But we black people, they, they, they propagandized us and made it seem like and enticed us with the city life. Because if my great grandmother had never come to New Orleans, I would be a Mississippi native. It's called Jefferson County. Now, back then, it was um, it was um, Stampley, Mississippi. But back then, it was Stampley, Mississippi. Now, it's Jefferson. That's where I would be born and raised from. But my great-grandmother was enticed. Her and her baby daddy, they was enticed to come on down here. And here we are. The resources are in the land. When people talk about reparations and they put a dollar sign on it, it grinds my fucking gears. Not because I don't think we deserve money. We do deserve money. But we, they done messed us up so bad that we don't even realize that the long-term wealth and the resources ain't in a check. It's in the land. That's what Martin Luther King said. He said, now, now this time when we come to, the, uh, to Congress, we coming to get our check. He didn't mean an actual check. He wanted his 40 acres and his mule that was promised to us. But you know how they get our minds off of it? Telling us we from Africa. Oh, it's, all, it's, the, it's that look that way trick. Like, oh, somebody tap you on this shoulder and you look this way the whole time they over there. That's what they doing. That's what they doing. You ever did that? Or oh, ever had that done? Somebody tap you on your shoulder, you look this way the whole time they over there like, ha! Ah! That's what's happening. That's what's happening. To this day, Tariq Nasheed leading them fucking people up there, he know good and well they're not going to cut no check. Umar Johnson, think, I think he's hilarious, but he knows good and fucking well ain't no such a thing as a motherfucking Pan-African. It just doesn't exist. Because guess what? When the rubber meet the road, them people going to go and be where they going to be. And they going to identify as them. And who, where they going to leave us? Where is it going to leave us? Looking stupid, thinking we all the same. And they know we not. We the only ones don't know we not. Let's get into it. Because that really blowed me. When I saw that shit, that lady, the older lady, I'm sorry, who lost her land. And we going to come back to that. Matter of fact, we could, let me see. Is this the one where we want to stay? Let's start. Well, I'm trying to see how I want to start. Let's do this. Um, hmm. Let before I move on. Kwame Ture, aka Stokely Carmichael, in my belief, was a plant. I'm still trying to figure out where the fuck he came from. Now I know I did the research today. And the research says that Kwame Ture, a.k.a. Stokely Carmichael, was a Trinidadian native coming down to New York, lived in an all-clear Italian, um, what you call him, went to a prestigious college, I want to say Harvard. How the fuck he get all the way down to the South? Not only that, he's the reason we calling ourselves Black. 
he was the one who introduced black power to us. Prior to Kwame Ture, a.k.a. Stokely Carmichael, we were Negroes. He's the one who came and instituted the black power structure. Said black power, black, what we need? Black power. So much so, even Martin Luther the King, we went over this. Martin Luther the King was just like, the fuck? We ain't doing that. We ain't signing up for that. We were being fooled right out of our fucking identity. Even though Negro ain't out of our identity. It's just, it just means black. But we were being tricked every 40 years out of our identity, which is why we went from African-American to black American. And we wonder why we ain't getting no reparations because black American don't fucking exist. What's to separate a black American from the African-American? The, 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 black, the black African? Nothing. Because it doesn't fucking exist. Yes, Steph, his daddy didn't like it either. Let's start with this documentary since we already here. So if you guys recall, and I know y'all are smart, you guys recall, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys recall that there's only one way they were able to institute new policies. Put it in the chat if you know the this way. In what group of people are they institute new policies? Even back then and even till this day. What group of people do they institute policies through? Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Through the youth. Thank you, Steph. I appreciate you. The youth. Because you know the old term, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. That means more than one thing. They have to go through the children. In 2024, this woke agenda with the LGBTQIA+, it's going through the children. If you think I'm bullshitting, peep this. I want to show you. I don't want to just say it. I want to show you. Hold on. I want to show you. I, I want you guys to see it with your own eyes. All movements come through the LGBT, I mean, not the LGBT, no, I'm sorry. All movements come through the children, period, point blank, because they are the most impressionable and they are the ones that you can look at and be like, yep, I can tell them this, that, and the third. They're not going to question it. All of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference were children. Um, all, the SNCC, all of these were children. Hold on. One second. I'm about to show y'all something. This new woke movement that they about to institute, in, introduce the peas through, that's coming through the churn. I'm about to show you. Hold on. It's ridiculous. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything you did has already been done. Okay, let me see. This might be one. No, not that one. God, no. And again, this is no shade to the community. I, you know, I support uh, rights for anybody. Um, I, I, I would never do it, but I understand what they're doing. They're co-opting these people's movement in order to push an agenda. And just like black folks, they did with us in civil rights. We don't even realize it. They are co-opting their movement to push an agenda. And that's just the way the government play dirty. Let me see. Yeah, here you go. I'm about to show y'all. Hold on. Let me back it up a little bit. Everything happens through the children. Now, these are clear children, but ultimately, it ain't just the clears. It's just period. That's how they introduce new agendas. Let me go get it. Here you go. Watch Candace Owens. At this college she's speaking at. A college. These are still children. Pete. Shit, I didn't mean to do that. Peep this. Hello. What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who actively feel victimized by your presence here today? Life's tough. Get a helmet, man. I'm too pregnant for this. 
Next question. Ain't that a college? Ain't that a college? Let me run it back just for all intents and purposes. No bullshit. See why everybody over here thinking this left versus right shit. Look at what's happening. Hello. What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who actively feel victimized by your presence here today? Life's tough. Get a helmet, man. I'm too pregnant for this. Next question. He's speaking at a college. Now, when it pertains to us, they all, I'm sorry, they always use the youth for our agenda because there's an agenda for everybody. L let's get it straight. Don't think because uh, 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 we black, we the only ones with an agenda. Everybody down there, I'm telling y'all, when it come to this shit, for real, for real, at a certain point, race what goes out the window. It's a status thing. And we are at the bottom of the socioeconomic status. So guess what? Black or clear, we all getting played. Black or clear, we all getting played. Now let's go get um further proof of what they do through the children. Listen to me. Further proof of what they do through the children. Now this is for voters' rights, right? Now peep this. This is for voters' rights. Look how interesting this is. Look, 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 look. Now, this is SNCC, right? This is SNCC over there with Kwame Toure, a.k.a. Stokely Carmichael, who's over there co-opting co this whole shit through the children to get them to go vote, even though their parents is telling them don't do that shit. We're going to fuck around and lose our land. We're going to fuck around and lose everything. It's the children. Watch this and listen to this song. Listen to this song. Then later I carried some more people and they did not finish because they began to beat Brit Travis and they got scared and ran out. Well, if you want Get into this one. Don't you hinder me. If you don't go, don't you hinder me. If you don't go. Look at look at look at the people on the screen. These are children. These are children. Listen to the lyrics. Now they're saying, if you won't go, don't get in my way. That's what they say. Don't hinder me. If you won't go, don't that's the that's the theme of the song. Now listen to what they say. Well, if you won't go, let your children go. If you won't go. Let your children go. If you won't go, let me let, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let the I'm, and it sounds like a clear man leading this, but let's go back and hear it again. Don't hinder me. Your children go. Well, if you won't go, let your children go. Well, if you won't go, let your children go. Before we move on, what else y'all need to hear? Real talk. Like, what else you need to see? Do we need to go get dig up an old grave and see if somebody can come talk to us to give us an interview? What else you need to see? What else we need to see? And think about it in 2024. The parents ain't parenting no more. So imagine the control they have over the children. Imagine the control they have over the children in 2024 because the parents ain't parenting. 
The parents ain't parenting. So uh, if they was able to control them then when they had parents, imagine what the hell going on in 2024. Wasn't we just watching the documentary? Quiet on the set. Who was being victimized? Put it in the chat. On quiet on the set. What group of people were being victimized in quiet on the set? What group of people were being victimized on, in quiet on the set? Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. See, people think physical abuse, psychological abuse, social abuse, they think that shit different. Their doctrine tells them that they can do that. It's okay. Oh, don't forget, if we this, their doctrine also tell them that we were breeding and born to be slaves. So it's okay. It's fine. You're good. And guess what their doctrine is? The religious doctrine of all Americans. I don't care what religion you is. That's the same doctrine everybody going to the church behind. I'm not going to argue with nobody. I'm not going to go back and forth with nobody. Baby, believe what you want to believe. Don't even believe me. I just employ people to do their own research. That's all. That's all. Don't listen to nothing I'm saying. Take notes and go do your research. Let's get into it. So now, this is the SNCC. This is uh, Kwame Touré, a.k.a. Stokely Carmichael, people. They have co-opted a grassroots issue in Mississippi. These folk already down there with uh, Fannie Lou Hamer trying to get their right to become first-class citizens. Like I said, if you just got here... We've already established, and we'll go over it again, that black people didn't die to vote. They never, they never give a damn about a vote. They thought that the vote would get them the right to what, people? First-class citizenship. Through the vote, they thought that they would get first-class citizenship, which is why they died. And it wasn't a whole bunch of them. It was like a handful if, at best. At best. Please like the video if you have not already. So now this is the Mississippi representative of, representative of SNCC. I'm sorry. He don't have no teeth in the front of his mouth. So it's given it might be Krishan, great, great, great granddaddy. We don't know yet. But let's get into what he has to say. Mind you, these are all agents. I don't think they're all agents. I think some of them were tricked to believe that what the fuck they was doing was right. I ain't gonna lie. But I always side eye them all. I don't know why. It fucks with me. Let's get into what he got to say about this whole shit. Then we're going to get into Kwame Toure and what happened with him and, and what he had to say about this whole voting shit. Let's get into it. The young people, there's hope. Many of them have dropped out of school for a year or more to work as field secretaries for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, going into the rural areas of the South to register people, to teach the people how to register and vote and to use the franchise as, a, as an effective means of change. They exist on 10 and $15 a week, living with the people, working with the people, trying to build new horizons for tomorrow. I, as a young Negro of Mississippi, feel that uh, she is not wanted because... Before we get into this, hey, Kathy, it's okay. Before we get into it, listen to me. As I'm watching this earlier today, doing research on this shit, I'm like, they ain't never, the kids, the people that's talking, they ain't never looking in the camera. I was like, what the fuck? Why they not never looking in the camera? Pay attention. Watch these people talk. Don't just listen. Listen with your ears and your eyes. Put your thinking caps on, people. I need everybody to put your thinking caps on. Listen with your ears and listen with your eyes. Matter of fact, listen with this eye. This the eye. Watch and listen. Pay attention to what is happening in these interviews. Peep it. Due to the fact the uh, white people of the South, they don't seem to understand the younger generation of uh, Negroes. Uh, we won't uh, put up with the uh, present uh, situation. Um, it makes uh, any Negro uh, who is sensible uh, kind of angry when he hears uh, any uh, 
person that's a Negro. Why do you want to do this, do that? Why do you want to vote? Why do you want to go to uh, the University of Mississippi? Well, uh, I think that the uh, Negro should uh, be able to choose his own uh, institution as the uh, white uh, youth when he finishes high school. I think that the Negroes should... I'm sorry, you guys. This is the loud as it goes. I'm so sorry, Pete speaks. This is the loud as it goes. It's not letting me go any louder. Yep, it's at its it's at its max. I'm so sorry, please. I'm so sorry. But listen, look, it's it's children. It's children. It's children they they talking to. That's being interviewed. Pete, be treated just like the white. I think when I will finish high school, that I will try to enter the college of Ole Miss as if James Murdy. My name is Emma Bell. I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. I'm 19 years of age. I'm a field secretary for the Student of Island for coordinating committee. I'm working for vote I'm working on voter education program in Greenville, Mississippi. I feel she looked off to the side. You saw it? As if somebody was was directing her. Look, watch this young lady right here. She was like, look, this is me watching this shit. Look. My name is Emma Bell. I'm from McCall, Mississippi. I'm 19 years of age. I'm a field secretary for the Student of Island for Coordinating Committee. I'm working for vote. I'm working on voter education. Did you see how she looked to the side like she, like somebody watching her? Did you see that? Look. Secretary for the Student of Island for Coordinating Committee. I'm working for. Look. Look. What's she looking over there for? If this is her story, and this is what she really feels, it kind of comes off natural. Like, yo, my name is Voodoo Dog TV. I'm working for Student Nonviolent uh, Coordinating Committee, and we here to do X, Y, and Z, woo de woo de woo Who's she looking at? Now, see, if I thought there was that something was strange about this, watch the next young man. The next young man told me I'm not tripping, Voo. It ain't true, Voo. You see what the fuck you seeing. Peep it. I'm working on voter education program in Greenville, Mississippi. I feel that the Negroes in the South, especially the younger ones, will like Watch to have eyes. the same wait, wait, wait. opportunities and privileges. Follow his eyes. Follow his eyes. You will literally see his eyes doing this. Reading that shit word for word, bar for bar, line for line. Watch this young man right here. Watch. Watch. This is y'all, y'all leaders. What's the man named the little short Bible head old man who just passed? Uh, the one who's who, who who went over there with Martin Luther the King, and he said he went to Martin, and Martin said, uh, uh, John Lewis. That's his name, John Lewis. That's this. This his people. That's his people. Peep it. Watch it. That the Negroes in the south. Watch his eyes. Especially the younger ones would like to have the same opportunities and privileges that any other American citizen would have. And living within the system of segregation, they are aware that this cannot ever exist. Therefore, they are willing to work and fight much harder to do, a, to do away with segregation. If that, didn't, if that didn't get me, look, first of all, this nigga here look like a serial killer. If that nigga, this one right here, if he ain't got bodies under the trunk or in, under, the, under the basement, that's different, but we ain't got to him yet. Watch how after he finished reading, he look up at the camera. Watch. That the Negroes in the South, especially the younger ones, would like to have the same opportunities and privileges that any other American citizen would have. And living within the system of segregation, they are aware that this cannot ever exist. Therefore, they are willing to work and fight much harder to do, a, do, to do away with segregation. I mean, I feel like the girl who, who was like, I'm sorry, student I'm violent and looked that way, she memorized her shit. And she kind of tripped up on her words. This nigga here was literally reading from a script. What is the problem with this? What is the problem with this? What is the problem with this? 
The problem with this is this right here is taken as fact. This is the whole point of Educational Friday, to unlearn the bull. This right here is taken as historical fact. If most people not paying attention, they won't even realize that they reading. They are definitely fucking reading without a doubt. But it's easy to get a child or a teenager or, or, or a college student to go along with the bullshit because they manipulative. They, they easily manipulated. I'm sorry. Again, if they can get them to do this in 63, oh my God, 2024, girl, they probably had y'all churn jumping out of trees, bitch, playing Tarzan. Do you hear me? Now I say rewinding one more time, just a little bit. Look, I'm a, I'm a rewinding one more time. Look at her, girl. She really, she the one. She gave the whole shit away. She was the one. Man, I hopefully she did it on purpose. See this young lady here? Shout out to the queen ancestor. I'm of the belief. She said, I'm about to blow the cover on all this shit, bitch. Student, I'm about, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look. I, I, she like if she like me, I would have did that shit on purpose. Student, I, the student, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, bitch. You know that blink twice if you in trouble, type shit. That's me. Let let's go it back. Let's run it back. Let's run it back. Some of them are memorizing. Some of them are reading. But this the one's blowing the lid off the shit. She the one made me look at the next nigga. Cause at first I was just like, why they sound like that? Then I saw her. Look, 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 look. I will try to enter the college of Ole Miss as if James Murphy. My name is Emma Bell. I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. I'm 19 years of age. I'm a field secretary for the Student Nonviolence Co Coordinating Committee. I'm working for. <laughs> I'm, I'm of the belief this was on purpose. Shout out to the Queen Mother. Shout out to the queen mother. She said, I may not be able to scream to the mountaintop like Martin, but I could at least give you niggas a blink twice if you need help type shit. You know what I'm saying? Blink twice if you need help type shit. She said, student nonviolent. Oh, <laughs> look at her face. Yeah, I am 19 years old. My name is Vanessa da da da. I am the secretary of the fifth student, not student. I'm sorry. Shout out to the queen. Shout, this, 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 this gotta be this gotta be our way of saying, hey, bitch, them people playing with us, bitch, they playing on our top, bitch. They got a gun to me, bitch. I'm just trying to say, bitch, they got me on here reading this shit, bitch. If you don't catch this, it ain't for you to catch. If you don't catch this, this ain't for you to catch. That's what I got from it. But look, look, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm rewind her back one more time. Then we're gonna get into the young brother. The young brother literally was going, and the apple fell off the tree. And when the tree fell off the apple, the apple said, boo, as I picked up the apple, I decided that I would eat it. After I ate it, I decided I was no longer hungry. Literally, I decided I was no longer hungry. Look, shout out to the queen mother, the ancestor. Get her back up here. What happened, Pat? My name is Emma Bell. I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. I'm 19 years of age. I'm a field secretary for the Student Nonviolence Co Coordinating Committee. I'm working for vote, I'm working on voter education programs in Greenville, Mississippi. I feel that the Negroes in the South, especially the younger ones, would like to have the same opportunities and privileges that any other American citizen would have. And living within the system of segregation, they are aware that this cannot ever exist. Therefore, they are willing to work and fight much harder to do, a, do, to do away with segregation. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, it's the way he looked up at the camera after he finished reading. That was the part that did it for me, y'all. I See, I be paying attention. I do the most. Look at after he finished reading how he looked up at the camera like, did I do good? Look, watch him. I'm working, for, Shout I'm out. working on voter education program in Greenville, Mississippi. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'm working for vote. I'm working on. Did you see how she rolled her eyes? I'm working for vote. I'm working on voting committee. I'm working for vote. I'm working on voting committee. committee. She like fuck. I'm working for. I'm working for the committee. 
<laughs> That's what it's giving. I'm working for. I'm working for the committee. <laughs> That's what it's giving to me. Look, watch I'm the brother. For, I'm working on voter education program in Greenville, Mississippi. I feel that the Negroes in the South, especially the younger ones, would like to have the same opportunities and privileges that any other American citizen would have. And living within the system of segregation, they are aware that this cannot ever exist. Therefore, they are willing to work and fight much harder to do, a, do, to do away with segregation. Look how our ancestor brother looked up at the camera line. I, I killed that shit. Mm -hmm. To do away, I'm sorry, to do away with the da 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 da. It was given. Let's move on. I don't want to harp on this too long because we got some shit to remind you. This is Kwame Toure, aka uh 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 was it Stokely Car? Not, not yeah, Stokely Car Michael. This his this his shit coming from Trinidad. Nope, coming from New York by way of Trinidad in the clear people. Now let's get into this this next nigga. This next this next nigga, I don't care what nobody say, had to have at least five dead bodies under the house. This nigga look like he's a fucking psychopath. Look. Uh the reason why I'm in the Tell me this nigga don't look crazy. Tell me this nigga don't look crazy in the role lizard. Let me let him finish though. The movement in the South is because I think that things have gotten to the point where people have to do things for them. Mind you, he ain't even from the South. He another implant from up North. He another implant from up North. Watch him. Uh, the reason why I'm in the movement in the South is because I think that Things have gotten to the point where people have to do things for themselves. They've got to stop depending on the, the federal government or the state governments or even their local governments to secure their rights for them. They've got to act to win the rights that the Constitution guarantees them. People must make up their minds that if they want to be free and if they want others to be free, then they've got to do something. Uh, something beyond just giving money or just casting a vote or just uh, wishing others well, but they've got to uh, put their bodies in the movement, as we say. They've got to get out on the front lines, and they've got to do something for themselves and for other people. Something wrong with that nigga. I don't know who his mammy was back in the day. I don't know where the nigga come from. He might be a clone for all I know. Something was terribly wrong. It was given weekend at Bernie's with the eyes open, bitch. Something was wrong with him. I don't care what nobody say. My name is James Jones. I'm 20 years old. I was arrested in Jackson, Mississippi for participating in the Freedom Rally. I was charged with Bridget of Peace and sent to Parsons Penitentiary. While, we, while being there two weeks, we heard the girls singing on the other side. So we asked one of the trusted what was wrong. He told us that the, the guards had taken the girls' mattress. So we decided that we would protest that same night. We all started singing. The sheds came down and put us in solitary. Solitary is about six feet wide. Seven feet tall. He put 27 of us in the solitary, and that night, one of the fellows panicked. Another guy fainted, and so we decided we would cool down and, and ask the guard and ask the sheriff to let us out. So he let us out, and now that I'm out of Parson Penitentiary, I'm now working on voter registration in Sunflower County. Parson is located in Sunflower County. So now we got a psychopath. A uh, 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 whistleblower, that's the young lady who went. Then we got an affirmist, but kind of like, hey, y'all, if you catch this tea, you're going to catch it. If you don't, that's the nigga who said, and we will move around the South. We got him, and we got now this speech impediment as ex kind. No shade. Yeah, it's Bree. He memorized this part for sure, without a doubt. This is a, this is brought to you by Snick. Snick Kwame Toure, aka Stokely Carmichael. This is his shit. The Trinidadian from New York. From New York. 
the fuck he know about what the fuck going on in Mississippi? The fuck he know about this shit? Girl, let's move on. This is music. We don't need to hear this. Mind you, they're working on cotton fields. Right to vote in our country. There's seemingly an end now look, chain. This the SNCC representative from Mississippi, Krishan's great great granddaddy. Look. Violence. Uh, deliver to Mississippi to register. The uh, register gave me some paper to fill out. I've done the very best I could, and I turned them in. After I turned them in, I left. And then as I was leaving, there was a group of white men was interfering with some of my friends, and I got them in my truck and got them the way as quick as I could. My name is Curtis Dawson. I was born and raised in a mid-county. I was in Liberty, Mississippi, on the way to the courthouse for to register the vote. Me and Knox and Moses. We met three white men, and one of those men jumped on Moses and began to beat him. Herbert Lee was the father of some nine children in a mid-county, Mississippi. The county is 54% Negro. Mm. He tried very hard. In a meat, as they say it in New Orleans, we would say a meat. But in a meat county, Mississippi, it was 54% Negro. But we the minority. Oh. We the minority? Go ahead. Uh, to get his fellow citizens out to register and vote. He was killed by a state representative from Mississippi, a white state representative, after he himself had tried to vote. These are pictures of his wife and his nine children. No more Young people working with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC as we call it, are characterized by a restless energy, a radical change in race relations in the United States. Their world is upset, and they feel that if they are ever going to get it straight, they must upset it more. My name is Charles McLaurin, and I work in voter registration in Sunflower County. On January 25th, 1963, I went to the mayor's office in Indianola, Mississippi. My purpose, the purpose was to see if there were any laws on the books that forbidden voter registration activities in the city. The mayor jumped from his seat and said, you black son of a bitch, don't you come in here arguing at me. I told him that we were there to do voter registration and that if there were any laws that forbid it to let me know. And he said, he said, no, I turned to walk away and he called me back, said, go out and teach everybody in the town. I don't care. But if you go into any churches, I will cut off the tax exemption. Oh, my name is Jesse Harry. And I Did you me. hear that? Did you hear the last part he said? Listen to the last part he said. Remember we were talking about tax exemption when it came to the land? Look what he said. Look what he said. Oh, that forbid it to let me know. And he said, he said no. I turned to walk away. And he called me back. Said, go out and teach everybody in the town. I don't care. But if you go into any churches, I will cut off the tax exemption. You get it? He said, go out and tell everybody across the town. If you go down there, fucking around, trying to become first class citizens, remind you, the, the clear people during that time was just as ignorant and being played just as much as the Negroes. We were all being played, all of us. It wasn't a one-sided thing. This shit was all of us. So he literally said, the, the uh, plantation owner told him, you carry your ass down there, we're going to cut off your tax exemption. What's, what, what helps you keep your land? 
I, let me go get this video. Hold on. I need to go get this. Hold on. What's his name? John Lewis. I want, I want you to hear what John Lewis said his mom and them told him. Look. Look, I want you to hear what John Lewis said his mom and them told him. Let me let this, uh, what's it called? Pass. Hold on. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me back it up a little bit. Let's go get what John Lewis had to say, how he came into the, to Martin Luther the King and all of them. Look, look what John Lewis, look what he said. This brother just said, the other brother just said, hey, they my, my plantation owner said, hey, you carry your ass down there. We're going to cut off the tax exemption. What? Look what John Lewis said. I have been told by my mother, my father, my grandparents, and great-grandparents, when I asked questions, they would say, don't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Don't get in the way. But I felt like Martin Luther King Jr. was speaking directly to me saying, John Robert Lewis, you too can do something. So in 1957, at the age of 17, I wrote Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. a letter. I didn't tell my mother, my father, any of my sisters, or brothers, or teachers. Funny you say that, Arthur Empress. I think they all were plants, but I do feel like John Lewis, I'm squinting my eyes. Because mind you, he was the one who went on to go into politics and all of that after Martin Luther King got out, got up out of here. But listen, that's not the point. Watch what he said his mom and them told him. Now, his mom and them told him, don't you go fucking with them people down there. Nigga, we got money to send your ugly ass to college. We good. We got land. Don't bring your stupid ass down there with that duck ass shit. And so he said he snuck and wrote Martin Luther King a letter, even though his mom and them told him, don't go fucking with them people. Watch. Watch. Keep in mind, the last brother said, the uh, plantation owner said, if you carry your ass down there, we're going to cut your, your tax exemption. Watch. The tax exemption literally only affected the fucking land. Watch. Watch this. I wanted to attend a little college 10 miles from my home called Troy State College. I applied to go there, submitted my application, my high school transcript. So I wrote this letter. Dr. King wrote me back and sent me a round trip Greyhound bus ticket and invited me to come to Montgomery to meet with him. Now, why would Martin Luther the King send this child at the time, 17 year old, a round trip bus ticket? All you got is a letter. All of the people Martin Luther the King that came across, why, what made this little nigga special more special than the others? He just wrote you a letter. What made him more special than the others? Just food for thought, rhetorical. Let's go on. So in September 1957, I boarded a bus. I traveled from Troy, Alabama, rural Alabama, past Montgomery, to Nashville to go to school. An uncle of mine gave me a hundred dollar bill, more money than I ever had. Gave me a footlocker, put everything that I own, my few books, my few clothing in that footlocker and took a Greyhound bus to Nashville. And while I was there studying, Rosa Parks came to speak at Fish University and I heard her. Now, first of all, we didn't cover this last week. That whole Rosa was a plant. And allegedly a slut from the 50s, allegedly. So him telling him, telling us he done went heard Rosa speak, I'm already looking sideways because this whole is a literal fucking actress. Rosa is an actress. We just went over this last week. Rosa is a real-time actress. So you're going to see Rosa, nigga. That don't move me because I already know what the real Rosa is. Matter of fact, is the bitch na real name Rosa. So he was so moved that the Passon Blanc, the light-skinned Rosa, the actress, uh, did a speech. Met her. And Dr. King later heard through one of my teachers that I was in Nashville studying. 
So Martin Luther King Jr. got back in church with me and told me when I was home for spring break to come and see him. So in March of 1958, by this time I'm 18 years old, I boarded a bus. I traveled from Troy to Montgomery. And a young lawyer by the name of Fred Gray, who was a lawyer for Rosa Parks, for Dr. King, and the people involved in the Montgomery bus boycott. I'm side-eyed and Fred at Gray. At the Greyhound bus station. And I'm side-eyed and Fred Gray, the lawyer. Why is they inviting these churns? They y'all ain't even getting a local churn. Y'all, y'all galvanizing churn from all over the goddamn world. What is going on with these people in these churn? Somebody say I heard Rosa was Pete was cheating with the bellboy. No, it was the nigga that said, All aboard. That's the nigga she was giving that cooch to, and her husband had left her. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Go back to last week's Educational Friday. I don't have nothing to do with that. But what I'm saying is, Rosa was giving that cooch to the nigga that say, all aboard that nigga there, okay? Now, he's on here talking about how he saw Rosa and it just moved him. So much so that her lawyer sent him another round trip. Why is these people, this is sex trafficking, this is child trafficking. What the fuck is y'all doing? Let me find out Martin Luther King was child trafficking, because how? Where? When? This is a child. I don't know what was in the letter Daphne. I'm trying to see something too. And drove me to the First Baptist Church in downtown Montgomery, passed by the Reverend Ralph Abernathy, and ushered me into the pastor's study. I saw Martin Luther King Jr. and Ralph Abernathy standing behind a desk. I was so scared, I didn't know what to say or what to do. And Dr. King said, are you the boy from Troy? The boy from Troy. Are you John Lewis? Yeah. And I said, Dr. King, I am John Robert Lewis but he still called me the boy from Troy. And he said, you know, if you want to go to Troy State College, we will support you. We may have to sue the state of Alabama. We may have to sue Troy State, but we're prepared to help you. Go back home and have a discussion with your mother, your father, you know, your home. Hold on, no shade, but to the boy from Troy. Um, he walks through the door, no sight unseen, mind you, because at this time, you would have to take a picture and send it in with the letter. What was in the letter? I don't know. But all I know is when he walked in, he said Martin Luther King, a.k.a. Mike Mike, was like, hey, are you the boy from Troy? And he said, Dr. Martin Luther King, I am John Henry Lewis, or whatever he said his middle name was. And he said, oh, the boy from Troy. Sound like me, bitch. I'm not about to do all that. The boy from Troy. The fuck? What's up? You know what I'm saying? Mind you, his mama had told him, don't you carry your ugly ass down there with that stupid ass shit. Don't fuck with them people. We good up here. Don't fuck with them people. Look, watch this. Could be bombed. That's what he said. Your home could be burned. Mm -hmm. Your family could lose their land. Oh, You could be beaten. Back it up. See, that's why I be having the trouble with Martin Luther King, with Mike Mike. I know he tried to write his wrong at the end, but I feel like to me the land, the, the 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 damage was already done. What did Martin Luther the King tell you? He said, "Hey, boy from Troy, uh, I know you want to be a part, but I'm just letting you know what could happen." Look at what Martin Luther the King told him. We just talked about land. Look, look what Martin Luther the King told him. Have a discussion with your mother, your father. You know, your home could be bombed. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Your home could be burned. Mm -hmm. Your family could lose their land. Hmm. Now, if they just down there voting for civil or uh, fighting for civil rights, what they got to do with the land? This is a real question. If they are simply fighting for voters' right, I understand them saying your house could be burned down because you know the clears was clearing at the time. See, that's the old school clears. The new school clears get the crying on Twitter. The old school clears. Those were the real clears. You know what I'm saying? So they 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 put their shit. They put they they was ten toes on their shit. The old clears, the new clears. They just be crying on Twitter. 
now we have white history month. You got black history month. We want white history month. They don't want weird ass queer. Listen, I'm pretty sure the old clears is turning over in their grades every time they see Twitter. You know what I'm saying? But neither here nor there. If y'all just fighting for civil rights, what that got to do with you losing your land? Your parents losing their land. Back it up. Skr, skr. Fannie Lou Hamer thought that she was voting for the right to become a first. Well, I'm sorry. She was fighting for the right to become a first class citizen through voting. But what black people didn't know was the okie doke. Scoop, scoop. Girl, y'all ain't going to get no first class citizenship. If anything, now you be really going to have a hold on you and go down your throat and choke you till you can't breathe. And now we can do whatever the fuck we want to do. But John, Lu John Lewis said Martin Luther King told him, hey, just FYI, you could lose your, your, mom, your mom and them could lose their land. Your father, you know, your home could be bombed. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Your home could be burned. Mm -hmm. Your family could lose their land. Mm -hmm. You could be beaten. Mm -hmm. You could be harmed. Mm -hmm. And I went back, had a discussion with my mother and my father. They were so afraid that something could happen to me, that could happen to them, or we could lose the land, oh. lose the farm. Wait a minute. Skirt, skirt. Y'all fighting for civil rights. What the fuck that got to do with your parents way back in Troy? Or way, wherever the fuck that is. What that got to do with them losing their land? The title of the stream is how black people were tricked into registering to vote. See, this is the part we don't understand, right? This is the part. This is the part right here. Now, Martin Luther the King told you, hey, just FYI, these are the terms and conditions, nigga. You can carry your ass up down here. You, they could beat your ass, right? They could hang your ass, right? Your, your mom and them could lose their land. John Henry Lewis was like, or whatever the nigga name is, was like, so fuck it. He go back home to the mama. The mama said, nigga, are you crazy? Fucking with them niggas down there, we gonna lose our land. Look, 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 look. I, I don't want to say I said it. I want you to hear what they said. Your family could lose their land. Mm -hmm. You could be beaten. You could be harmed. And I went back, had a discussion with my mother mm -hmm. and my father. What they said? They were so afraid that something could happen to me. It could happen to them, or we could lose the land, lose the farm. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to have anything to do with my attempting to enroll at the school. And I continued to study in Nashville. And from time to time, Martin Luther King Jr. would come to Nashville to speak at Fish University, at the city auditorium, tell the story of the movement. Rosa Parks would come there. And I stayed in touch with Dr. King, and he became, in a sense, my hero, in a sense of- Yeah, we don't hear all the rest of that shit, John Lewis. Listen, if somebody told me as a child, I'll tell you what, I, I, I can use my child. If my child was at school right now, and they say, hey, if you do X, Y, and Z, your mama could lose her house, I know the type of child that I have, my child would be like, well, I'm good. Uh-uh, I ain't about to put my mama house at risk. Hell no. She could lose her job. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. But not Mr. John uh, Lewis. Mr. John Lewis said, fuck them people. Fuck that house. Fuck that land. Where do I sign? And Martin Luther King said, welcome to the party. You're late. Welcome to the party. You are late. Now, people say he was a plant. I believe in gardens. Girl, bye. Moving on. Get off of here, John Lewis. Get off of here, John Lewis. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's go back to where we were. Now, we done seen the people reading off the scripts and wooty wooty wham wham, right? Um, let's get into our queen mother. Wait, before we get into her, hold on. I want to make sure I got everybody I need to get. Hold on, because I got I sent a whole bunch of stuff to myself. No, before we get to Queen Mother, let me send this picture to myself because we got to dissect this. Hold on. We got to dissect this shit right here. Because, see, I'm trying to show y'all in real time what the fuck is going on. Because, see, 
I'm trying to unlearn the bullshit we done learned. And this is the problem with these documentaries, or at least this one and the shit that was going on. Listen to me and listen to me good. Most people will say, well, who gives a shit they reading? Bullshit. You want to know who gives a shit? Me. Because this is being taught as actual fucking history. And it's a lie. It is not history. There's nothing about this is history. It's all a fucking script. Remember I keep telling y'all? Remember I keep telling y'all? I say, what did I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all? I say, life imitates art. Life imitates art. Let me go get this picture. Now, most of you guys didn't understand, didn't realize this. Um, let me make me, let me just put, put the picture up here. Look, look at this picture of Fannie Lou Hamer, right? And then we're going to go get Stokely crazy ass. We're going to get Kwame crazy ass, right? So Stokely on here, no, Fannie Lou Hamer on here trying to get the right to vote because she thinks she's going to register to be a first class citizen. When I tell you the world is a fucking stage, you haven't seen nothing yet. Oh, I got a lot of shit for y'all. So. She's registering to be a first-class citizen through voting, right? Boom. Look who this is behind her. Who's that? Well, who is that? Let me see if I can zoom in, please. Who that is? Who that is? Y'all see him? Who that is? Who that? Who, who that? Hopper, who that man? Hopper, who that man? Who's that nigga on that neck? Oh, yes, it's Stokely, uh, Arthur Empress. Of course it is. The Trinidadian nigga from New York. Concrete jungle where dreams are made. There's nothing they won't do. Yup, he from New York. These niggas think they look brand new. They lies will entice you. Let's hear it for New York, New York, New York. The home of the melting pot. Throw the whole fucking pot away. Do you hear me? No shade, New York. Shout out to y'all, but throw the whole pot away at this part. Throw the whole pot away. Who called Stokely? Who went say, Stokely, get your ass down here. We need you, said nobody. But for all intents and purposes, we just going to go with the move. We going to go with the move. We are going to go with the move. Look at Stokely, bitch. Look at Stokely. Look at Stoke. We going to call him Stoke. Look at Stoke. Look at Stoke. Government fucking agent, if you ask me. Allegedly, apparently, I believe. Oh, I believe a government fucking agent. Look at Stoke. What the fuck you doing down there? What you know about Mississippi, Stoke? Stoke, what the fuck you know about Mississippi? Mm. I'm glad you asked, Vu. Oh, you did? Oh, yes, I am. But let's get into it. Before we get into the Queen Mother, um... Before we get into Queen Mother um, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer, I want to show you guys something. So Brother Stoke decided to take to an interview in the 80s, and they were asking him, no, let me back it up. They weren't asking him a motherfucking thing. They were guiding him into saying what they want to say. Oh, yes, it was the clear people. But, you know, I keep telling y'all, we talked about this this morning, right? We talked about this morning. I say, look, I say, hey, y'all, they can only get away with the shit they're getting away with. If there's a Negro involved or a seeming Negro, because he ain't Negro, he Trinidadian. He Negro Negro as far as color, but he ain't nigger. He ain't nigger. And I'm still trying to figure out where the fuck he came from. Let's go get Stoke up here. So Stoke did an interview. The SNCC organizer, oh, no. Bob Manson. Myself. Stoke did an interview, right? Now, this clear woman is clearly, no pun intended, guiding him on what she want him to say. Uh, she don't want him to say nothing outside of the script. And whenever he does, she puts him back in line. Let me go get it. Hold on. Let me let me go get the timestamp. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk. We're going to discuss it. Let's discuss it. We're going to discuss it. This your boy Stoke. We got to get him on here. We got to get Stoke on here. Hold on. Get Stokely up here. I've been on my research shit all day. 
901. Let's go get the timestamp. Now, the people are asking Stokely, this is in 88. They say, hey, what's going on, Stoke? Oh, none chilling, you know, like a villain, just losing my mind or whatever the case may be, you know. And then they start to ask Stoke about the whole Voting Rights Act and what how that came about. Let's go get Stoke and what Stoke had to say. Let's go get him. Now, go ahead on, Stoke. But its real profound impact was probably the 1962 debate with Bayard Rustin. I go back to this point because Bayard Rustin had an effect also upon SNCC people. Ten thirty. Ten thirty. Mark it here. Why does Snick feel that it's important to go into Lyons County? You know, uh, Snick's decision to go into Lyons County comes in the fall of 1964, after the uh, Democratic uh, Convention in Atlantic City, where the majority of Snick people, uh, prior to this, had voted a decision, a political decision, that Snick would create a Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. And you heard that? That Snick, that's his people, his shit. He that's him. Remember, he was with Dr. King at first, then he he did a whole left turn. Now he's saying that Snick decided we was gonna start a Mississippi Voters Right Freedom Club or some shit like that. Who the fuck told you to do that? But go ahead, mind you, the nigga ain't no citizens or nothing. But let's go. Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party would challenge the legitimate Democratic Party of Mississippi would defeat them because of the blatant, illegal, and unjust stance which the regular Democratic Party took at that time, headed by uh, Eastland, the racist, and uh, they would march into the Democratic Party. There was a minority position that this was not correct. The Democratic Party could not be depended upon. It had no, uh, there was no basis, in fact, on which to depend upon it, neither moral nor any other position. But the stick majority position was this should be done. Of course, in 1964, when the Democratic Party responded in the manner in which it responded, and SNCC would not accept that response, the majority of SNCC people... Oh, look, the clear lady said, she don't like that he said we wouldn't accept that response. Here you go, MOB. MOB, we do this every stream, MOB. There we go, MOB. There we go. MOB, we every stream we come on, we got to do this same song and, song and dance. MOB, go lay down. Wait, I learned it in, in, in Spanish. I forgot how to say it. Or whatever the fuck I was saying this morning. Go lay down, MOB. Y'all always don't want to claim the bad people. Go ahead on and take your lick. Take your lick, MOB. Every stream, we got to go through the same thing, MOB. Go lay down. This is your people. This come out the melting pot. This is in the pot, MOB. Every time we get on this live, here go MOB. Oh, we don't claim that one. Oh, we don't claim this one. Go lay down, MOB. This y'all people. They come out the pot. Now, I've been telling y'all tip the pot over, but y'all don't want to hear it. So now that y'all don't want to tip the pot over, he come out the pot. That's your people. Don't do that. MOB, we do this every stream. Don't do it. Okay? Shout out to MOB. Now, let's get back into it. Now, look. So, um, um, uh, um, the lady didn't like that. He said we didn't want to accept that they wasn't moving how we needed them to move. So the lady telling him, oh, no, can you uh, uh, skirt, skirt, bring that back? Because we don't want you to say that on camera. I don't know who who recorded this, but it was funny that they did. So look, watch watch the lady when he said we didn't accept what they was doing. Look what the lady said. There was a minority position that this was not correct. The Democratic Party could not be depended upon. It had no, uh, there was no basis, in fact, on which to depend upon it. Neither moral nor any other position. But the stick majority position was this should be done. Of course, in 1964, when the Democratic Party responded in the manner in which it responded, and SNCC would not accept that response, the majority of SNCC people. So you could say when they refused to recognize. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't want to go into that. I was... So you can just say. Okay. Just <clears throat> she didn't like that he said they didn't accept it. She said, so just say refuse to recognize. She That's what she, listen, that's why I be telling y'all. All this shit is bullshit. Look. Okay. When the uh, Democratic Party <clears throat> refused to uh, seat the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party and in fact seated the racist uh, Democratic Party with the compromise, which it's which it called a compromise, was unacceptable to SNCC. The majority of people in SNCC had no alternative 
for SNCC's political strategy. Those who had in the beginning opposed the decision to work uh, with the challenge for the Democratic Party, but worked with it anyway because they were disciplined to the organization, though outvoted, were the only ones with a pliable alternative, a viable alternative at that time. They presented an alternative of organizing the African community outside of the Democratic Party, independent political party. Alabama was selected and Lowndes County as a county which uh, we had not done much work in. Do you see directing in front of your face? Now imagine the edited version when we don't see this part and we just see what he's saying. We already saw the first people reading. The other girl like, anyways, yeah, I work at SNCC. Y'all remember the light-skinned girl when she said the student nine Biden and she was like, so anyways, I work at SNCC. You know what I'm saying? Now we got, then we had the weird looking nigga, the one who I believe should have been, probably was a serial killer. Then we had the young boy who said, and we will go downtown. Now we got Kwame Ture, AKA Stokely Carmichael being coached on how and what to say. Yes, he did, Nikki say African community. Because remember, the new the new narrative, the new narrative introduced in the 60s. Remember, we did that on last stream, or was it stream before? In the 60s, they introduced the out of Africa theory. That is when black people in America who was looking for searching for who they were, they were taught through school that they were from Africa. Africa. So of course he's gonna say Africa. He's on script, right? Ain't he getting paid allegedly? Allegedly, I don't know. I'm just telling y'all what they say. Like the video if you're just coming in here, y'all. If you haven't already, like the video. I keep telling y'all these people are puppets and life is a fucking stage. I keep telling y'all, y'all don't be listening. And you're watching it in real time. But again, I ain't say it. This is what they say. It. So let it be, let it go, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh... Girl, Arthur, go lay down, Arthur Empress. She said, Voodoo, Voodoo Stokely had to be Pan-African. That is why he wanted to help. That's what it was. It was He was Dr. Umar before Dr. Umar. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Consciousness before cookies. Publications before Punani. A uh, 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 revolution before romance. This was Stokely back in the day. Revolution before romance. Consciousness over cookie. That was that was Stokely. You're right. That that's what it was, Arthur. You're right. Arthur, you're right. That's what it was. That's what it was. It was giving Dr. Umar opening a school with ain't a key or a door. Shout out to my beautiful author Empress. <laughs> Consciousness over cookie. Peace from the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Peace from the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Peace from the Prince of Pan-Africanism. I don't want no snow bunnies. All African. Where's my chocolate mocha? Where's my caramel latte? Where is my vanilla ice? Spice chocolate mocha. I need all consciousness over coochie. But that's just the fine. I ain't gonna lie. She fine. Ooh, Lord. The, ooh, Lord. The creator did a good job on her. But don't worry about it. Consciousness over cookie. Okay? Yes, Kiki. No snow bunnies allowed. No snow bunnies. No snow bunnies. No snow bunnies. We only want our African queens. That right there was Stokely. That's what it was. I was fucked up. You're right. You're right, Arthur. That was what that's what it was. I miss I misspoke. My bad, y'all. That's what Stokely was doing. He was the he was the prince of Pan-Africanism before the prince of Pan-Africanism. In case y'all want to know. He was the prince of Pan-Africanism before the prince of Pan-Africanism. I can't see any other reason why his Trinidadian ass moved to New York. This went to the, then went to the South to help the civil rights movement. Child, who knows? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Steph, no mayonnaise. 
No mayo on my sandwich. Only mustard and ketchup. No mayo. Okay? No mayo. Sarah says, when we told our grandpa, our grandma we was African-American, she almost passed out and yelled at us. Uh, we was American Indians and asking who told us that lie. She said the school, this is why this was in the early 90s. My grandma, too. I asked my grandma, I said, Grandma, you remember your grandmother being a slave? She said, Well, no, we were sharecroppers. Y'all gotta talk to the elders now. Y'all gotta talk to the elders. Shout out to my my beautiful, my authors, author Empress. She made me see a new light. Stokely was the prince of pan-Africanism. I had it wrong. My bad, y'all. Now we got to stop. Now I got to stop with all of that. Now let's move on since we found out Stokely was only the simply the prince of Pan-Africanism. That's all it was. I had it wrong. Stokely was the prince of Pan-Africanism. Let's move on. So now let's get to the speech because Stokely is the same brother who entered the black power oh, bullshit and we're going to get to that before we get up out of him. But let's go to the speech that our queen mother, Miss, Mrs. I'm sorry, Fannie Lou Hamer did down there. She bust into a doggone um, a, a, a televised meeting and basically said, yo, um, nigga, y'all need to hear this shit. So much so, so much so, so much so that the television network cut to the president making a speech about nothing and then that made people want to know even more okay so let's get into it um i think i went down too far hold on let's go get the queen mother we gotta go get the queen mother but stoke who 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 sent you stoke i'm trying to see who sent stoke let's go get the queen mother Cause that's all we can do at this point. Let me find the timestamp. It's at. All right, hold on. Let's let me go get the timestamp, y'all. Sorry about that. All right, let's get it, and we will go from here. Let's go get it. Uh, right in the middle of her testimony, uh, in order to announce that it's been nine months since John Connolly was shot at the time President Kennedy was assassinated, a completely fabricated anniversary in a sense, I guess it was nine months, but it was a meaningless uh, anniversary. He just didn't want the TV networks to carry her, uh, her, her statement and obviously showing where what choice he, he was making in terms of what kind of Democratic Party he wanted. Uh, so here's, here's a bit of what she said. The Mississippi Freedom Party delegation, that is the largely Negro group. Which insists that it should be seated because the regular Mississippi Democrats are not in fact Democrats at all and would not support the ticket in November. Joseph Rao, who is a Washington, D.C. attorney, uh, is presenting the case for the Freedom Democratic Party, and he is calling a succession of witnesses, among whom are Aaron Henry, a druggist in Clarksdale, Mississippi, chairman of the Freedom Party, and also president of the NAACP in Mississippi. And he is speaking now. He is to be followed by perhaps four or five other witnesses, among them perhaps Martin Luther King. Listen, did y'all see how she came in that bitch? You feel me? That's a strong black woman there. You see how she marched through that bitch? Like, let me through this bitch. Get out my motherfucking way. I love me some Miss um Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer because she came in and said what she got to say. Let's get into her speech. Yeah. Want me to stand. Mr. Chairman and to the Credentials Committee. My name is Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer, mm -hmm. and I live at 626 East Lafayette Street, Roosevelt, Mississippi, Sunflower County, the home of Senator James O. Eastland, 
and Senator Stennis. It was the 31st of August in 1962 that 18 of us traveled 26 miles to the county courthouse in Indianola to try to register to become first class citizens. Pause. Excuse me, ancestor. Did you hear that? Hey, hey, next time y'all hear a black person tell y'all that our ancestors fought for our right to vote, please remind them that that's not the case. They fought for our right to become first class citizen through the vote. Please, I employ everybody on this live. Next time you hear somebody say, but your black ancestors fought for your right to vote. They died for your right to vote. No, they didn't. They fought for our right to become first class citizen through the vote. Please just do me that favor. And if they, they push back, just tell them, go to do the research, send them a link or something. I don't give a damn. Our ancestors thought that they were doing the right thing by, by becoming first class citizen through the vote, even though they were fooled. Now, now we're getting into the comments, the topic. Now we're getting into the topic. The topic is how were we tricked into registering to vote? We saw everything leading up to this. Our queen mother here thought that what she was doing was the right thing to make us first class citizens. I will never have an issue with what she did because she did what she thought she should have done. Let's move on. We was met in Indianola with, by policemen, highway patrolmen, and they only allowed two of us in to take the literacy test at the time. That's the vote. After we had taken this test and started back to Roosevelt, we were held up by the city police and the state highway patrolmen and carried back to Indianola, where the bus driver was charged that day with driving a bus the wrong color. After we paid the fine among us, we continued on to Roosevelt, and Reverend Jeff Sonny carried me four miles in the rural area where I had worked as a timekeeper and sharecropper mm. for 18 years. Mm. I was a timekeeper and sharecropper for 18 years. So they on their way to register to become first class citizens. They take the literacy test. That's the test to vote. In order to vote back then, you had to take a literacy test. Why is this important? It's important because her mindset is we about to become first class citizens. I don't give a fuck if it's through voting or, or, or line dancing. Regardless, the, the goal is to become a first class citizen. In order to do that, in this particular case, it had to be through the vote. So they had to take literacy tests. They had to prove that they can read. Listen to me. They had to prove that they can read in order to, to, to vote. So they go down there, take the test on the way back. The people harassing and fucking with them, they pay the fine. And they still was fucking with these people. I was met there by my children. They told oh, me the plantation. Really quickly, she told you around this time she had been a sharecropper and a timekeeper. Most of our ancestors were sharecroppers. Most of our ancestors were sharecroppers owner was angry because I had gone down, tried to register. After they told me, my husband came and said the plantation owner was raising Cain because I had tried to register. Do you know why the plantation owners were upset that the black people were trying to vote? Two reasons. Number one, they were taught that, you know, Negroes don't have no rights. But also, more importantly, number two, it affected their money. Think about this. If I got somebody on my plantation working for me and I'm paying them pennies, by the time they go register to vote, I'll do you one better. When you move into a new country, county, not country, or state, county, parish, or whatever it is you move into, you what's the first thing they send you, especially when you buy a house? What's the first thing they send you? Hey, you want to register to vote? That's the first thing they do, right? The reason they do that, because that then declares you as an equal citizen, not first class citizen, but an equal citizen. So she's saying her plantation owner didn't want her to go and register to vote because of two reasons. Two reasons. Number one, you a nigga. You don't deserve to vote. Number two, if you go register to vote, bitch, I'm going to really lose some money on you because now you are equal fucking citizen. For the love of money. 
Even her husband came and told her the plantation owner came and said, hey, tell your wife, chill the fuck down, pipe down. She kill her ass down another vote. Then that's a wrap for y'all ass. They lived on the man's plantation. They had to. So the husband come in and say, babe, you might want chill on this shit. But she believed that she was doing the right thing for the people. J girl said, what year was this? Now the interview was in 64. She's speaking on an incident. I want to say that happened in 62 or 63. Right around the time they started popping people upside the head for trying to go vote. And before he quit talking, the plantation owner came no. and said, Fannie Lou, do you know that Pap tell you what I said? And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I mean that, that if you don't go down and withdraw your registration, you will have to leave. That then if you go down and withdraw, that you still might have to go because we are not ready for that in Mississippi. Remember I told you the two reasons why they didn't want her to vote? Number one, you's a nigga. Number two, bitch, if you go register to vote, bitch, I can't hold... You remember they told y'all slavery ended in 1863, but announced to the Texas people in 1865 and everybody was free. It was the civil rights movement that brought around voting rights, desegregation that fucked us. We have been economically fucked ever since. The plantation owner knew that. Look, you carry your ass down there talking about you won't go vote. You got to go. I can't keep you on here. Because now you, it's, it's almost like dependence. Look, it's like this. Look, dependence. I have a dependent because the law says I can carry my daughter as long as she's in college up to she's 23. Think about it like this. But if my daughter get a job, I'm not going to get no tax credit on her. Or if my daughter... Uh, 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 make it past 23, no, past 17, before 17, I get, what it is, 2,500 a kid? Before 17, I get 25, 16 and under, I get 2,500 for my child when I file her own taxes. 17 up, unless she's in college, if she's in college, 17 to 23, I get like, what, a couple of hundred, three, four hundred? But after 23, I don't get nothing. I don't get nothing. I don't get, it, it's different. In, listen, my the, when I file my taxes, they tell me 23, Ruby. So I don't know. It's 23, college. That's it. College, you done. After college, you dead. But even still, I don't make nowhere near as much money as I made for tax deductions than I did when she was 16 and under. She was making, it was 2,500 for her 16 and under. 17 now through now. Oh, I think it's like three, 400. In Maryland, it's 25? Hmm. So you wonder why the plantation owner was mad with her. It's almost like if, with black people in their taxes. Look. <laughs> black people in their taxes. Y'all know if y'all could keep them churn 16 for the rest of their lives, y'all would be filing them churn on y'all taxes every year to get that money. The plantation owner was dealt with the same thing. And I ad addressed him and told him that I didn't try to register for you. I tried to register for myself. I had to leave that same night. On the 10th of September, 1962, 16 bullets were fired into hmm. the home of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Tucker for me. That same night, two girls were shot in Roosevelt, Mississippi. Also, Mr. Joe McDonald's house was shot in. And now she's talking about how they started shooting up a house because she said, I'm still going to go. Uh, no, she's not saying NOLA. She's saying Indonola. That is a county or a city inside of Mississippi. Indonola. That's what she called it. That's what she's saying. It's not NOLA. But now they're trying to shoot because they're trying to intimidate her. Like, bitch, we about to, it ain't about you, bitch. It's about my bottom line, my money. I don't need you going down fucking around with this voting. John Lewis Moore told him, don't carry your ass down there with that ugly ass shit, nigga. Carry your ass down there. We're going to lose our shit. Not only were the clear people losing their shit, the Negroes was losing their shit too, which is why John Lewis' mama said, don't go down there with that stupid shit. That's why his mama was, his mama and daddy was mad. Because it wasn't about race. I know they teach us this in school. This was a whole race thing, black versus white. Mm -mm. 
Because guess what? If the South had won the war, the Civil War, you wouldn't have a doggone labor law or labor ta or taxes. It had nothing to do with race. I know they made it seem like that, but this was about money. All of this shit was about money. Peep. June the 9th, 1963, I had attended a voter registration workshop, was returning back to Mississippi. Ten of us was traveling by the Continental Trailway bus. When we got to Winona, Mississippi, which is Montgomery County, Four of the people got off to use the washroom. And two of the people to use the restaurant. Two of the people wanted to use the washroom. The four people that had gone in to use the restaurant was all it out. During this time, I was... You're hearing, I've been hearing testimony by Mrs. Fannie Lou Hamer, who was a candidate for congresswoman from the second... This when they cutting her off and they're going to go to the president while he talking about some bullshit, just that so they didn't want people to see it. They ain't want people people to hear what she said. Look. From the district of Mississippi in the Democratic primary, she lost. She's here to testify for the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. Also on that list of witnesses later today, Mrs. Rita Schwerner, widow, widow of one of the three civil rights workers killed in Philadelphia last June, will be resuming our coverage of the Credentials Committee hearing and also going to the White House in just a moment after a station break. What television audiences didn't yeah. get to see because of let me see if he gonna play it. The president came up with a whack ass speech that it ain't. I'm talking about he literally came out with a State of the Union address about nothing. Let me see. All of this is the, on account of we want to register to become first class citizens. You heard us say it again. They remind you they cut the broadcast. They cut a broadcast. She said all of this because we wanted the register become to become first class citizens voting didn't they didn't give a fuck about voting they did it by any means necessary shout out to malcolm x it was to become first class citizens period point blank them niggas could have said you could have been climbing trees they would have registered to climb trees because the end goal was to become first class citizens so when you hear Negroes running around in 2024 saying you need that, you have to exercise your right to vote because our ancestors died for it. No, the fuck they didn't. They died to become first class citizens. Murder. All of this is the, on account of we want to register to become first class citizens. And if the Freedom Democratic Party is not seated now, I question America. Is this America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, where we have to sleep with our telephones off of the hook hmm. because our lives be threatened daily because we want to live as decent human beings in America? Huh? Why does their phones have to go off the hook? And why are they lives being threatened? She said it because we want to live as decent human beings, aka first class citizens. That's why we've been voting ever since. Catch this tea. We've been voting ever since. And we ain't got a nickel 95 to show for it. Oh, Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Been voting. And ain't got a nickel 95 to show for it. Thank you. So, Gerald, she, she makes right. this. Uh... So now, moving on, a lot of people will say, well, voodoo, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know. You don't know. Our ancestors fought for our right to vote. They died. You don't know what you're talking about, voodoo. Well, let's hear from the ancestors. I ain't going to say it. I'm just going to tell y'all what they said. I'm not going to say it. So let's check in to Miss Fannie Lou Hamer. Now, uh, should I do this? We got time. Look, let's go here. So Lyndon B. Johnson, LBJ, mm-hmm. He was the one who implemented the Voters' Rights Act. 
This about to get juicy. This where the tea about to spill, right? So Lyndon B. Johnson was the one who implemented and signed in the Voters' Right Act. Now, I know y'all probably saying, well, shit, that's good, voodoo. Of course. It was all in the plan, okay? It was all in the plan. You have to understand, hold on. You have to understand the plan. To, like, like I said earlier, I saw it somewhere online. It says to understand what people are doing, you have to understand the, the, uh, the end goal. So the end goal, let me go to the 140. The end goal for this, for Lyndon B. Johnson and the crew, was never to make sure Negroes had any voters' rights. They don't give a mother pluck. If anything, he didn't even fuck with us. But let's go get Lyndon B. So he can say what he got to see. You know what I'm saying? As it pertains to why in which he signed. Now, these are leaked tapes, leaked calls. You know, they his first presidency, they, they recorded all his shit. And the FBI just leased his shit, released his shit. Now, here soon, we're going to be re releasing Martin Luther the King. They say he got sex tapes. I don't know it. I'm just telling y'all what they said. Now, if they release it, I don't care how much it costs. I'm going to get it. We don't have to do a listening party. I'm going to just tell y'all what I heard. You see what I'm saying? We don't have to do a listening party, but they said, the people, they said the shit that you about to hear gonna make you crazy. You feel what I'm saying? And I just want to know when he, I ain't gonna do it. Anyways, let's go get the all uh, people. Let's go get the president, Lyndon B, and see what brother Lyndon had to say about the Negroes, okay? We gotta go get what he had to say about the Negroes and what was going on back then. Because see, a lot of Negroes at the time thought that, um... They thought that, you know, Lyndon really gave a damn. And the, the, the lie detector to determined that was a lie. Let's get into it. In the basement. Mind you, these are leaked audio. This is leaked audio. Washington's Masonic Temple is a shrine that is closed to the public. It's a memorial to one of America's most powerful men, J. Edgar Hoover, mm. head of the FBI and a close... I forgot. His BFF was Hoover, the nigga who... Alleged, no, not allegedly. They say he really was black, you know, Passon Blanc. But listen, his best friend was J. Edgar Hoover, who hated Martin Luther the King. He just wanted to get him out of here by all means necessary. His friend, President Lyndon Johnson. Uh, but I didn't want this opportunity to go by without telling you again how proud I am of you and how glad I am that Uncle Sam's got you working for us. And uh, uh, if you just think that you're going to get off the payroll because you're getting a little older, you're crazy as hell. I don't retire in the FBI. This is the story of how Hoover tried in secret to prevent equal rights for blacks. Hmm. Legislation Johnson wanted more than any other law. Looks like it's about time to stop talking. I just think that we're going to have them out in the streets again if we don't, uh, don't make some little progress. Now, mind you, before we move on, Martin Luther the King, a.k.a. Mike Mike, worked for the president. Agent Plant, why don't you? Yes. See, Martin Luther the King thought he had a friend in the clear man, and it turns out the clear man don't give a damn about you. His real friend was J. Edgar Hoover, the one who was trying to expose your ass for the freak-offs. The, the the real friend of J. Edgar Hoover was the clear man trying to expose your ass for the freak-offs. Sam Johnson needed as an ally was Martin Luther King, mm. the very man Hoover wanted to destroy. Hoover's plot took place in a twilight world away from the cameras, so we have used actors to illustrate many of the scenes in this film. But what was recorded at the time the telephone calls between President Johnson and key players in the drama. These are the calls you will hear in the film. Um, Fudu, did you know the White Pride, the White House has a film? That, of course, the Pentagon, yes, because we are all in the audience of the theater, Brianna. Of course, I knew that, Brianna. Listen. We are all in the audience with our popcorn in the theater. Yes, Brianna, I knew it. Uh-huh. We at the theater, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course Mike was a snake. Of course he was. Of course he was. But, you know, Negroes will never hear it. They love, they revere Mike, Mike, 
like they uh, revere white Jesus, you know. But let's get into it. They always have a token nigga. That's why I keep telling y'all. Remember the girl said this morning, asked me this morning, I forgot who it was. What would we need to do? I said, well, first of all, we need to be able to vet because it's going to be a lot of people infiltrate that look like us. This nigga here. This nigga here. LBJ ain't give a motherfuck about no niggas or niggers. Let's get into it. The roots of this story go back to August 1963, three months before Lyndon Johnson succeeded the dead President Kennedy. 200,000 people gathered in Washington for the biggest demonstration for civil rights in their country's history. All led by, me, by your boy Mike Mike. After a summer of direct nonviolent action in America's Deep South, black leaders decided to lift their campaign to a national level with a march on Washington. It was this event that raised a 34 year old black preacher from Georgia to the leadership of the civil rights movement. There you go. There you go, Mike Mike. He's your plant. He's your plan to be, your plan to be forever, your memory's loving treasure to give you your heart's desire. He's your plan to be. Your plan to love forever. Your plan to get you together for your heart's desire. Throwing nothing but hot fire. He's your plan to be. Let's move on. I have a dream. Mm -hmm. that my four little children mm -hmm. will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Mm -hmm. It became one of the seminal speeches of the century. But it also divided the country at large, mm -hmm. the Congress and even the government. When we allow freedom to reign, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Niggas ate that shit up. Niggas done ate that shit up. Niggas done ate it up. Look at the niggas. Ain't, don't this look like how T.I. had the niggas riled up with uh, Candace Owens? Look at the niggas and the clears. But look at the niggas, though. Focus on the niggas. Look. That was her, uh, yeah. Sound about right. Sound about right. Now, we're going to get into more of that later. I want to show y'all what, what Lyndon B. Johnson really felt about y'all. Because, see, I don't think y'all really understand this part right here. Let's go get what Lyndon B. really felt about the niggers. And he didn't say niggers. He said nigger hard R. Hold on. It's a, it's a short, it's a 45-second clip. But we got to go get this part, okay? Hold on. We got to go get this part because this is a very important part. I know Negroes back at the time thought Lyndon B. was for the Negroes. He didn't like the Negroes, but that's all right. Let's go get what he really felt behind the scenes. And we're going to go through these tapes too one of these days. You know, they had to release his first. We might have to go and do a, a, a private stream on uh, the freak offs from Martin Luther the King. I'm still deciding on my morality. Let's get into the tapes though from uh, the clear man. Say what you can't have a poll tax. They can say you can't have a gas tax or cigarette tax, or anything else. The federal government's telling the states that uh, uh, pretty tough what, what their business is. Now you can say that they can't discriminate, 
but I've got to prove that it discriminates. And I can't prove it in Texas. There are more niggers voting there than there are white folks. And Pause. This is in 64, 63, 64. Lyndon B. Johnson say, they trying to say that we discriminating. He said, but I can't really prove they discriminating because shit, in Texas, it's more niggas voting than clears. I saw they fired Candace. I don't give a damn. Fuck Candace. But I like what she said the other day. Look, look at what he said. Discriminate. But I've got to prove that it discriminates. And I can't prove it in Texas. There are more niggas voting there than there are white folks. There are more. But we the minority? So in 64, there were more niggas voting than white folks, but we were the minority? Buying poll taxes now on white folks. Higher percentage of them. And I can't show that, uh, that the literacy test is, is, is discriminated against because they haven't got any. They got no test at all. Just by Texas don't even have the literacy test. Mississippi had it. Possibly in Louis. All the other cities had it. States had it, I'm sorry. Texas didn't have it. He said, I can't even prove it's through the literacy test because they don't even have it because it was all a fucking script. It's a script. And they need actors to play in the game. But I can't use Texas because it's more niggas voting than white folk. And not only is it more niggas voting, hard R niggas, not only is it more niggas voting than white folks, they ain't even got no motherfucking literacy test. What I'm going to do with that? How am I going to further propagandize this bullshit if Texas got more niggas than clears and the, the niggas is voting more than them? What I'm going to do with that? I can't do nothing with that. I can't get jiggy with this shit. That's what it sound like to me saying. I can't get jiggy with this shit. You say that they can't discriminate, but I've got to prove that it discriminates. And I can't prove it in Texas. There are more niggers voting there than there are white folks. There are more of them buying poll taxes than there are white folks. Higher percentage of them. And I can't show that, uh, that the literacy test is, is, is discriminated against because they haven't got any. Mm. They got no test at all. Just by God, anybody that can get up and pay a dollar and six bets can vote. All right. Y'all heard that. Child. It was a time back at the Oval Office. I didn't say it, but they said it. It was, it was a time back there. Okay. Let's move on. So now to the people who were wondering. See, first of all, let me, let me say this before we move into this next video. Let me say this before we move. No, you know what? Before we move into this next video, let me go here really quickly. Remember I told you we were called black? Remember I told you we were called black? Remember why I told you we were called black? Because of Kwame Ture, a.k.a. Stoke. Stokely Carmichael. Here he go talking about why we were called black. Are we on it? Yeah, we on it. Let's get into a Stoke. What happened? How, how did you get to the Black Power speech? And then we're going to wrap this shit up with, with Queen Mother Fanny. To uh, use the term Black Power, SNCC had already decided this before the march. It must be properly understood. Just... Mind you, SNCC decided they were going to use Black Power. Southern Christian Leadership Conference ain't had nothing to do with this. And he supposed to be under Martin Luther the King, Mike Mike, and his people. So where the fuck is y'all coming from? But he said, oh, we had already figured out we're going to come through with the Black Power. Who told y'all to say that? Snow, Stoke. Who told y'all to come out hollering black power and then followed by Jack, not Jackie Brown, <laughs> uh, James Brown, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. And we've been black ever since. Decided to use the march for an education purpose. Number one, we wanted to push strongly our struggle against the war in Vietnam. So if people look clearly at the merit of march, you will see anti-Vietnam propping up here. King wasn't using it then, but you will see this one of the areas where we started to hit him with it seriously. Our march was to put strong nationalism in, to have direct leadership uh, from us, and of course, to throw out black power for the mass of the people. Now, I myself had been in Greenwood, Mississippi since early 60. I'd worked in the project there, and when the head of the second sec congressional district, this was our base. So I had spent time in the jail in the Greenwood so many times. The police knew me, the police chief knew me, everyone in the town knew me. So we decided Greenwood, it was Nick's strongest base in the Delta. We couldn't go wrong. Unfortunately for the police, we went to set up some uh, tents there, and the police had decided to arrest me. Okay, so before I was arrested, we were discussing Greenwood. This is where we will launch Black Power. So when I... Remind you, 
he was arrested, but in my belief, part of the script. Got arrested. Uh, that nigga wasn't no more arrested than uh, Rosa Parks when she was smiling for her mugshot because she knew she was going to hop on that all aboard peen. Ricks uh, was on the side there when the police said, let them arrest you. We'll get you out of jail and you come out and make the speech tonight. And he disappeared. Well, you know how Rick speaks. So <laughs> anyway, I went to jail. But uh, I was brought out and uh, when I was released, it was at night, the speech was going on. And uh, when I came to the speech, I was in line. Ricks came back. He said, we have everything prepared. We're ready for black power. We've uh, spoke about it all day. We've uh, primed up the people. And luckily for us, our biggest problem was Martin Luther King. Well, because why is that? He's the leader of the whole shit right now. How is your biggest problem Martin Luther the King? Oh, because Martin Luther the King was from the era of black folk who realized that being called black is not only derogatory, it literally erases us. Martin Luther King didn't want nothing to do with that. I showed y'all this a couple of lives ago. He sat down with him like, yo, explain this black shit because I'm confused. I'm confused, nigga. Y'all running around here talking about black power, nigga. What the fuck is y'all talking about? Because in my school of thought, that shit, that don't go like that. So he had to wait till Martin Luther the King was not around to implement the black power. Watch. Because I knew that once uh, black power was uh, said, Martin Luther King would have to come, not uh, fight against it, but would his best try to give reasonings to water it down. But uh, luckily for us, the night in Greenwood, King had to go to do a taped... Uh, television thing i think for meet the press so well what a coincidence they just happened to do the black power thing where he just happened to be out of town doing meet the press we had to go to memphis so he was not there the night in greenwood ricks had everybody primed he said just get to your speech we're going against freedom now we're going for black power don't hit too much on freedom now but hit the need for power so we built up on the need for power and just when I got there, before I got it, Ricks was there saying, hit him now, hit him now. And I kept saying, give me time, give me time. When we finally got him, we dropped it. Black Power, of course, they had been primed and they responded immediately. But I myself, to be honest, I didn't expect that enthusiastic response, you know? And the enthusiastic response obviously not only shocked me, but gave me more energy to uh, carry it on further. Uh, by the time we got down that night, SCLC was running around everywhere. We knew it was finished. We had made our victory. They could not bring it back. It was over. You heard it? He said by the time... Like hold on. One out of four. And I'm right. not a, uh, he said by the time these niggas caught on, it was already too late. And it was what it was. Mind you, they had to wait until Martin Luther the King was allegedly... At a doggone meet the press interview. They, they ain't do it when Martin was there. They did it after he left. Let's go get the speech. Now we heard him describe the speech. Let me see. Is this it? Let's go get the speech. He said the people was behind him telling, say, say it now, say it now. He said, wait a minute, give me a minute, give me a minute. Give me a minute. And they were saying, say it now, say it now. Mind you, they planned this around Martin Luther the King, allegedly being not being there but let's go get the speech see and this is the stuff that moved me so i know it moved y'all because this is before i had the knowledge that i have now it moved me that this is some real type black power type shit whole time it's a script stokely what happened stoke stoke now we have two psychological battles that we're fighting against white folks we won one they told us that we should hate Malcolm X. we don't that's that's what they told us thank god <laughs> This is my question. Why he acting like a nigga, like a Negro, like you Trinidadian? Shouldn't you be over there saying, Team, blah, 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 I said, I done to ya. Why is you over here acting like a Southern nigga? Now, the Negro is the one that we're now fighting is whether or not we will have the right to use the terms to decide how our movement is going to go. They don't want us to use black power. I got news for them. Because what black power was supposed to do was to start bringing black people together under a slogan that everyone understood. But what in fact is done is it's organized white people and their Negro allies. <laughs> We are to stop saying that we are 
apathetic because I'm going to find that word for you. Apathy means that you won't work on a program that I tell you will help you. I know NQ, he grew up in New York, unfortunately. New York, y'all taking past L's. How y'all take the L's from the pa girl? Y'all taking time machine L's, New York? New York take L's from the time machine. This some old back to the future type time machine. This some old back to the future L. Girl, New York, y'all got, yeah, that's how I know y'all strong. I, ain't, I don't have to say y'all gotta be strong because y'all already strong. When college students leave a good job and go to Mississippi to organize their people, that ain't hardly apathy. And when people get together in what? And in Chicago and organize the rebellion, that ain't hardly apathy. You saw that, George? He said 300, 300 million Africans were shipped over here in wooden sailboats. That's a story for another day, okay? That's a story for another day. Vita's daughter said the way they can switch up their tongues. Don't the uh, London people do it? Don't the dude who dances in, dance some Indra's? Don't he sound real California on the show? But when you get him off that bitch, he be saying, top of the morning, mate. Or what about the uh, the black boy who uh, uh, played in 12 years of state, slave? I don't want no more cornbread, boss. Soon as you get him outside the script. I do not know what you guys are asking me because I am not of the country. The fuck? Nigga, I, don't even, I still don't know how to pronounce his name. I still don't know how to pronounce his name to this day. See, we thought we had to worry about the clear people cosplaying. Negro Americans got to work worry about everybody cosplaying. And you know what? We should be a we should feel special because why everybody want to cosplay us? Cuz they know something we don't. Duh. That's his name, Boyega. What's his name, leader? Boyega. Interest two here, another one. Interest another one. But what Boyega, what's the first name? I, I still can't pronounce that nigga name. Girl, let's go see what the people got for their vote, child. So now, the, the black people, sorry. So now, people, uh, Negroes, had fought for their right to vote. They had already um did what they needed to do, woot de woot de woot And we gonna end it on this. This is for the people who come on my morning, Josephs, and for the people you guys meet on a day-to-day -day basis who say, you don't know what you're talking about. Black people... Fought to vote. How dare you? You're such a traitor. Well, this is after Fannie Lou, right before she passed, God bless her soul, had them found out, you know, she had them fought. They did what they had to do for their right to become first class citizens. It was never about this other shit. But after her fight to become first class citizens, they checked up on Fannie to see how the people was doing. Let's go see what Mother Queen Fanny had to say. Let's go get them. Place. You know, um, people is not just walking up like they used to do in the past, walking out, you know, shooting a man down or getting maybe two or three hundred people carrying you out and lynching you, but it's it's in a small, subtle way. Um, you know, they let you starve to death not give you jobs. These are some of the things that's happening right now in Mississippi. See, Mississippi is not actually Mississippi's problem. Mississippi is America's problem. Mm -hmm. Because if America wanted to do something about Back. what has been going on in Mississippi, mm -hmm. it could have stopped by now. It wouldn't have been in the past few years, Forty uh, between 40 and 50 churches bombed and burned. You see, Mind you, this is after they got the voting acts right from Lyndon B. Johnson, who really didn't care about niggas anyway. But listen to what I'm saying. She's saying if America wants to solve Mississippi problem, they would have been solved it, but they don't. This is after her, you know, kind of on some Betty Wright shit. After the pain 
and listen, I'm not going to shade my, my queen. I'm not going to sit up here and act like she was wrong because she did what she thought she needed to do. But after the, the dust settled and the smoke cleared, like Martin Luther the King, they start to realize all this shit we did and it was all for nothing. So she over here saying Mississippi problem ain't just a Mississippi problem. It's an America problem. And if America wanted to fix it, they would have. And I'm pretty sure that lady probably said to herself, if I had known doing all of that wasn't going to help nothing, I would have probably not done it or did something else. This, this, you know, this leads me to say, you know, all of the burning and bombing that was done to us and the houses, nobody never said too much about that and nothing was done. But let something be burned, you know, by a black man. And then, my God, you know. You see, the flag is is drenched with our blood. Hmm. Because, you see, so many of our ancestors was killed because we have never accepted slavery. Mm -mm. We had to live on it, but we've never wanted it. So we know that this flag is drenched with our blood. So what the young people are saying now, give us a chance to be young men, respected as a man, as we know this country was built on the black backs of black people across this country. And if we don't have it, you ain't gonna have it either because we gonna tear it up. That's what they saying. Mm -hmm. And people ought to understand that. I, I don't see why they don't understand that. They know what they've done to us all across this country. They know what they've done to us. Yes. This country is desperately sick. Mm -hmm. And man is on the critical list. I really don't know where we go from here. You heard that? You heard that? Did you hear that? Now, this was our queen mother, Fanny. Fanny, I'm sorry, after she did all of that, arrested, beaten, all of that shit, after all of that, she realized we still fucked up. And now she understands why the, the, the younger group was like, we going to get it by any means necessary. So when people tell me in 2024, oh, voodoo. Our ancestors died for you to vote and you don't vote. You don't get a say. Or when they say, well, if you don't vote, you don't make a change. Well, we have ancestors who literally fought for the right to vote and still didn't see a change. Quiet as it's kept in 2024, y'all voting and still don't see a change. And again, I'm not telling people to vote or not vote. I would never tell anybody how to vote and not to vote. But this is what I'm saying. We got to go back to the drawing board. Because if, if it didn't work for our queen mother, Fanny Lou Hamer, insanity is the definition of what? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. But go get your sticker, fat. Go ahead on, get your sticker. Nevertheless, um, really quickly before we get up out of here, because we're going to move into Stokely Carmichael next week. No, no. Possibly Stokely Carmichael, and I want to go between um, Steve Coakley because I've been watching a lot of his stuff. Really quickly, shout out to everybody who supported the channel. Like the video if you haven't already. Thank you. Don't ask me for shit. Uh, appreciate what you do. Love you, Voodoo. Thank you so much for your cash app. Thank you, Nikki T88. Thank you for all you do. I appreciate you, my love. Thank you for your cash app. Big Lou in the building. With old generous cash app. Shout out to Big Lou. Big Lou, not the Lil one, is definitely in the building. Shout out to Big Lou. I sure appreciate you, fan. I don't know what you do for a living, but whatever you do, keep on doing it. You know what I'm saying? Big Lou in the building. Shout out to April for the cash app. I appreciate you, my love. Um, And shout out to Philly. 2386 for best day of the week. I love this day. Do you understand me? Philly, I love this day. I love y'all so much. Let me tell y'all something. First of all, please follow me on Rumble. Please go to Rumble. Follow me on Voodoo Doll TV and Welcome to the Dollhouse. Those are two different things. Also, thank you to everybody for being here. Thank you to everybody for being here. I'm sorry. Next week, we either going to go straight into the Stokely joint 
Oh, we're going to go into this this uh, Steve Coakley thing that I really wanted to get into. Either way, we'll figure it out. Uh, my Rumble people, y'all know we're going to do. I'm going to put up a poll to see what we're going to talk about. Oh, not what we're going to talk about. Because we're definitely doing a Jackson 5. We're doing that next week. So make sure y'all there. Thank you, Miss Kitty. I appreciate you. Miss Kitty says she really enjoyed Educational Friday. That's what it's about. Thank you so much, Miss Kitty. I appreciate you, my baby. Thank you so much. That's 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 gratitude enough for me. If you have not already, please like the video, y'all. Please, it's free. Uh, like I said, I see y'all tomorrow. We could joke on some tea on some early shit, like mid, like midnight, like noon. We'll joke on some regular shit. But th- like I said, these are the days that really fulfill me most. My morning jokes, educational Friday, and my deep dives in Rumble. Y'all really fuck with me the, the heaviest. Thank you, Kiki or Kiwanya Spencer for the cash app. Thank you for educating us. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much, Kiwanya. I appreciate y'all. Listen, I'm going to get up out of here and I'm going to Joe y'all up out of here. And before I Joe y'all out, I think I need a like a more appropriate intro for Educational Friday. Not saying that the music ain't bad, but I think we need something more to the topic. We'll think about it. We'll discuss it here later. You know what I mean? But I just want you guys to know, happy Friday. I love each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all so much for being here. Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow by uh, noon, my time, Eastern. And we'll be able to go from there. So I love y'all. I'm going to Joe y'all up out of here. Y'all do something nice for yourselves. Love y'all. Peace. Check one two one two. We live in. Come, come, come on. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can you can you can you hear me now? Oh, let's go. <laughs> it's your boy Big Chu, the voice of the beat. You know what I want? Blaze up. Come on, Blaze. It's a beat for me. Wah 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 wah